Real people, real opinions, real talk radio. The multi award winning Niall Boylan Show. Classic hits. Aliens. Some people believe that their existence is real. I suppose we would be naive to assume that there's nobody out there. It would be very naive naive of us to assume that and very egotistical to even assume that. But there are individuals in this world who claim not only to have met them, but one man, Jonathan Martin, says he is a channel for ETs or extraterrestrials, an extraterrestrial civilization known as the Yahil. Our, ya, sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Yahil. And the Yahil share information on spiritual awakening, living our life uh, purpose and extraterrestrial contact. And I want to speak to Jonathan, who's on the line now. Jonathan, good afternoon to you. Good evening to you. I don't know what time it is in your part of the world, but um, it's, well, you're in England, are you, at the moment? Yes, I'm in England, so same time as you, I think, 9, 9 p.m., I think. Oh, all right, okay, that's fine, that's fine. I, for, for whatever reason, I thought you were in the United States. Uh, okay, but uh, Jonathan, I mean, when did you discover that you were communicating in some way with extraterrestrials? Um, I guess it was around, it was September 2009. I had this um, experience in the forest which um, I, I sort of put down as a spiritual awakening experience. But I now believe I actually uh, went aboard an extraterrestrial craft, but I didn't remember it at the time because I've recently had the same experience again, just this September of the year, uh, last year. And, what, and I, what was I, that experience, Jonathan? When you say you had an experience that you believe you went across or aboard an extra, to extraterrestrial craft, what do you remember from that? Well, I'll, I'll talk about the more recent experience because that was um, more more profound and I remember more of it. So it was in September of the, of the year just gone. Okay. I, I was in the forest and um, just sort of sat down relaxing and all of a sudden I felt sort of like I was having a spiritual type experience. Like my energy became very heightened, my senses became very heightened. I sort of went into a euphoric sort of blissful state Mm-hmm. I um, I actually began to see in a kind of multi-dimensional way where I, I just didn't see one future reality. I could see all potential future realities laid out in front of me. And, and, and then, whose future reality was that? Your future reality or the future reality yes, of mankind? It, or? No, it was, it was just my reality. It okay. was like rather than seeing one, I, or I could sort of see lots of different versions of the forest I was in. In, in front of me. I can't remember it exactly. Um, okay. And then the next thing I know, I've, I seem to be standing in a different position. I'm standing in a strange prone position. The light has changed. Um, I'm all disoriented, and there's all fighter jets flying around my head. Like, I can't see them for the cloud cover, but, but, but so, so I clearly had this period of missing time which I didn't remember anything about at first, but about a week later, I, I began to recall an experience aboard an extraterrestrial craft. And when you, when you say there was fighter jets around you, do you believe that you were somehow transported into the past or the future? No, I, I think what happened was that um, one minute I'm in the forest and then I had an ET contact experience. I actually went aboard the ET craft. I didn't remember it initially. It, uh, it was a period of missing time, which is quite common of, amongst experience. I've, I've heard of this before, yeah, this missing time. And, and when you say you went aboard the craft, do you have em- any memory now of what the inside of this spacecraft was like? Yes, about, about a week later, I began to recall memories of being on the craft in meditation. It was, I, I remember um, being guided through, through the craft and there was, it was very blue. I remember it was all lit up a, a, a kind of blue color. Mm. And um, the, the, I was like, sort of walked along this craft and introduced to several different extraterrestrials and many different civilizations. And what did they look like, Jonathan? Did they l- well, look what, similar to what we would imagine, like greys? Well, um, the, the, the ones I'm in contact with, the Yael, looked like that. But there was um, a variety of very different looking beings. And the first being I actually recall seeing was actually, it was like this sort of seating area. It was a bit like a coffee table area, like a sort of chill-out area. And there was like, almost like um, like kitchen units around the side. And the being that I remember the most distinctly seeing first was like a two-foot-tall ladybird sat on the 
sat on the side of this kitchen kitchen unit. Like, so what, like, like shaped know, like, like a ladybird or just the colour yeah, of a ladybird? it was virtually exactly like a ladybird. It had sort of, it had sort of more, I guess, more of a human face slightly, but it was more like a ladybird, but you could see like eyes and nose and mouth and like two little tentacles pointing out the top. And it was sat on the side of this kitchen unit on, on, on the back of its shelf. So that was and, and, and before we go any further, Martin, because I'm sure people who have just tuned in, um, or Jonathan should say, but before people who have just tuned in and probably thinking, okay, this, this chap has just taken too much LSD or he has a mental health issue. I mean, clearly you're a, you believe you're a sane person. You believe you've actually solved this because people are sceptical by nature. And you, you understand that, Jonathan, I suppose, that people are sceptical. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure, sure you've had people, you know, I won't say abuse you, but think that you're nuts, like... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sceptical myself, and it, it's taken me a long term, time to come to terms with this. You know, I, I studied as a, as a scientist, and I've got an engineering degree, so I come from a very scientific background, mm-hmm. and I always try and analyse everything scientifically. And it, but because I don't actually have, you know, because I recalled it a week later in meditation, you know, I had to sort of say, well, am I imagining this? But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm perfectly sane. You know, I, I've mm-hmm. rationalised this. So I, I've studied a lot of other cases, you know. And, and why, it's very but why is it, Jonathan, can I ask you that when we hear, and, and I'll ask you a few more questions about the Yahil in a second, or the Yahil in a second, but in relation to, say, people who have had extraterrestrial experiences or claim they've had, or who have been abducted or have been taken on board ships or have missing time, I mean, this is 2019. Most people have a mobile phone with a camera on it. Why do we? Why do we not see any evidence of this? If if it's happening so often, why? I mean, the only thing we ever see, if it be it on the Discovery Channel or on websites, are dodgy, blurry, you know, shady pictures. We we never see anything quite clear about it. Why? Why do you think that is? I think one, perhaps the main reason is is the the ETs. They don't want to be photographed. They. They respect they respect our our natural evolution as a species, and they don't want to force themselves on us. They want it they want it to be up to us to decide if we want to have contact. And a lot of people don't believe in them, and a lot of people aren't ready for contact, and they they don't want to force themselves on our reality on their reality. I think so the majority we- of people in the world probably believe, and I think as I said at the very start, we would be naive to assume that there isn't other civilizations somewhere out there, you know, I don't know, light years away, millions of light years away, there probably is. There would have to be. We would be biz- it would be bizarre if there wasn't, right? Because we're not just the only coincidence in the galaxy. But in saying that, you know, if these people are out there or these civilizations are out there, I mean, this idea that we think they look slightly humanoid with legs and arms and like the greys that we see typically as, as aliens is probably not what they're like at all. We probably can't even see them. Maybe they exist in a different parallel universe. Maybe they exist or their their makeup is different to ours that we actually physically can't see them. We have this assumption that we should be able to see them like we can see a pen or we can see a piece of paper. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? That we, we kind of have this assumption that they must look similar to us in some way. Yeah, um... I mean, I've heard that the reason why a lot of them do look similar to us is because we're actually related to them. Um, but but what, like what you say, is you, you don't think we should be able to see In a way, it can be hard to see them because they do exist in a kind of different dimension. Like their reality is very different to ours. And this is one of the reasons they're not forcing themselves upon us because they, they live in what we might call a very enlightened state. Their consciousness is... It, it, I, I've actually struggled to sort of come to terms with the experience, and I, I believe I actually had sort of mild post-traumatic stress after the experience mm-hmm. because the experience of being on the craft is so completely different to our reality. It's like a higher consciousness state where we're all one with the universe. Like I say, we can see multiple multiple dimensions of reality at once. And, and, you're, and you're, like- you're communicating, you're now channeling and you're communicating with the Yael. And wh- how do you know they're called the Yael? I mean, are they speaking English to you? No, the way the messages come through, they, they come through as like a, a telepathic download. It's like I intuitively know the information that they're sharing with me instantaneously. And then when I'm channeling, I translate that into English. Right, okay. So... It's like an automatic translation in your head. 
Yes, so, so, sometimes I'll see images to to, sh- to show me um, what they're pointing to, or sometimes I'll just like instantly know, like intuitively. Okay, and what do they what do they think of us? They must think that we're quite odd. I mean, obviously to, to them we're aliens. So what, what have they said? What, what have they asked you about human beings and what we do and what our life is like and how long do we live? Have they asked you questions? Uh, no, that they fully understand us because they've been monitoring our civilization very closely for thousands of years. Right. And, and what do they think of us? Uh, they, they, they find us very humorous. Oh, okay. Because, because from their perspective, we, we are all like one consciousness and they teach us that we create our own reality and we're all part of God. And it's actually impossible to die and it's impossible for any harm to come to us because we're like infinite co- beings of energy. So when they see us like running around all day, like worrying about paying bills and worrying about dying and worrying about all the ridiculous things, they find it hilarious. And, and are they, when you mentioned God there, are they religious? Do they believe in a God? Well, I wouldn't say they're a religion, but yes, they, they believe um, that we are all one being, that there is no separation, that there is only one consciousness in creation, and we are all that same consciousness. They believe we are not separate from each other. We are all one being. And are you, are you religious, Jonathan? Would you be a believer, um, are you a believer in God and creation? And yeah, Yes, well, well, I wouldn't say I'm religious, because I, I, after my contact experiences, I went through an enlightenment experience where I came to... And, and now more and more I directly experience myself as one with all beings, with you, with all of creation. Mm-hmm. So in, in a way I've seen what the Buddha saw, I've seen what Jesus saw, I've seen what Krishna saw, I've seen what Muhammad saw. So I understand the essence of all religions, so I, so I don't need to prescribe to one particular religion because I understand what the religions are pointing to. And are they, I mean, is there... I know this might sound like a bizarre question, but well, well, nothing is bizarre after what I've just heard over the last 10 minutes, but is, is there young aliens and older aliens? Are, are, are they just all the same age? or Because I'm trying to get a visualisation of exactly what we're talking about here. Are they all, do they all look alike? Do they all sound alike? Are they all the same age? Are they all of the same generation? Or do they? Because you mentioned, you know, they think it's hilarious that we worry about death and things like that. In other words, they don't die. Are they immortal? Um, no, some of them, some of the non-physical ones, I have a kind of immortality, but the ones with physical bodies, like the Yael and the Greys that do the abduction, uh, they all have physical bodies and they do die, but because they're so telepathically evolved, they're still in contact with the, the members of their civilization after they die, and much in the way I, I've become, I, I can still communicate with deceased relatives. So, Oh, all right, so, so you, you're a medium as well? Yeah, because me- medium is really the same as channeling. Once, once we understand that we're all one consciousness and we literally experience our reality as one being, we can tap into any aspect of ourselves, whether it be a deceased relative in living in heaven or the spiritual world or an extraterrestrial on another planet or another dimension. Well, I mean, well, that indicates to me that you are religious then if you believe that deceased relatives go to heaven uh, and are part of this one consciousness with, you know, other beings in other lands and other worlds. So well, yes, then you I mean, are you, kind of religious, aren't you? Yes, I mean, you could, you could I, you know, in a way, I'm very, very religious, but, um, you know, I, I don't say, like, I'm a Hindu or I'm a Buddhist or I'm a Christian. I, I can see the truth in all spiritual teachings, no, in but, all well, religions. Yeah, but that does make you religious. I mean, by definition, being religious means you believe in a higher power of some... And, and this higher power that controls this consciousness that we're part of, that the Yael are part of, that the Greys are part of, is it the one... A higher power, do you think? Yes, well, ultimately, it is us. Ultimately, we are God, because if we are all one being, if there is no separation in creation, therefore, we must be God. We, 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 are, we are all one consciousness, like you, me, every being on the planet, every extraterrestrial, every person in heaven, every animal, every plant, every two-foot ladybird. We're all one consciousness. We're all the same entity, and that is God. This is what God points to. By the way, if anybody's any questions at all for Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Martin says that he has channeled and talked and communicated, and also not only communicated, but been uh, on board an alien spacecraft. Uh, you can text your questions in to 087 You can WhatsApp us as well if you want to. That's 087 8 There is a question there from somebody actually who says, um, how long did you spend with the aliens? Do you know, I mean, you said it was missing time. 
and, and you mentioned as well that you mentioned September 2018, but you also said there was a more recent experience as well, which you haven't talked about to us yet. But how long in total did you spend with them? Can you, can you put a time on that? Yeah, I, I can't say for sure, because all I remember, like, uh, initially was at one point, I'm in one part of the forest, and at the next point, I'm facing a completely di- different direction, and there's fighter jets all flying around me. And I, I, what I remember, I only remember through meditation. And so I, I, feel, I guess it was somewhere between 20 minutes and two hours, but I didn't notice a huge amount of time missing on the clock. So I feel it was probably only... 20 minutes, an hour, 40 okay. minutes, some, something like this. All right, okay. And do they, do they have offspring? Do they reproduce like us? Yes. Um, from what I understand, they do reproduce. But some of the more evolved civilizations, um, they, they don't actually have sexual intercourse. They just come together in an energy field and they actually creates like an energy between between them between a male and a female and the the, the child is born within an energy field so there is so there is genders yes yes okay so there, there is male and female yes hmm that, that's kind of interesting isn't it because it, it, like i suppose you could have coincidences and, and we again i mentioned that we were naive, naive think we're not the only ones out there but to think that they also, not only do they kind of take our form in some sense, but also that they have male and female, uh, which some people believe at the moment that's a social construct. I personally don't believe it's a social construct. I think it's biology. But uh, th- So you're saying they have male and female and they don't have any other genders. You'd imagine that they seem very close to what we are, in other words. Yes, well, as I understand it, we are literally related to them. We, we are um, like... Many, many thousands of years ago, we were actually genetically engineered out of the DNA of many extraterrestrial civilizations. So we are actually related directly to a lot of these well, that doesn't um, fit in with That doesn't really fit in with, I suppose, the Jesus and God narrative of the Bible, does it? Um, well, if you look at some of the stories in, in the Bible about the Ele- Elohim and the Nephilim and the, and the, and those, those um, a, a passage where it said the, the sons of God took the daughters of men, for they saw they were fair. And so there is actually a, a, quite a lot of talk about um, other civilizations and interbreeding with like two different races, the sons of God and the sons and the daughters of men and, and, and the Elohim and the Nephilim. And so I, I believe this points to um, sort of this interspecies um, breeding. Okay, and has there been any interspecies breeding, do you think, at the moment, I mean, have human beings, you know, have, I suppose, had, I just put it bluntly, had sex with aliens and produced offspring? I mean, is there any hybrids out there? Yes, well, well, this is what's occurring. The Yayel that I channel are a hybrid species of humans and the greys. So presumably, presumably you've heard of the grey ETs that do the abduction. Well, that's kind of something we just assume is on TV. I mean, it's a kind of... TV adaptation of what we believe aliens probably look like, but it would be bizarre if they actually did look like that because that's just what the way we artistically drew them, isn't it? We, I don't. Yeah, know, well, we, we, we never captured any aliens. Well, not that we know of. Well, I think we have actually um, in the in the from the Roswell crash. It was one of the. See, this is where the the image of the great ET comes from. Well, that was that was that video not proved. This is the the autopsy. Was that video not just proven to be a fake? Yeah, I think, I, I don't know. I think it probably was a fake. Yeah, but it was. I, I do believe that they captured an extraterrestrial from Roswell. But when, well, if they did, why, why is there no, surely at this stage, it's nearly 80 years since Roswell, why have we no pictures of it or something? I mean, of course, Roswell and what they said happened in New Mexico was, was, a, uh, was a weather balloon and not a spaceship to, at all. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people believe the stuff going on down in Groom Lake and all sorts of carry on going on down there, but we, we haven't actually really seen any evidence of that. I mean, there's no photographs. Yeah, I, I, Surely I mean, somebody would leak a photograph or sneak one out if there was an alien in a cage somewhere or, a, or being kept somewhere. Yeah, I mean, we have seen some photos. It's hard to say for whether they're real or not, but uh, basically the government has done a very efficient job at covering this up for, you know... And why, why, would, they cover, why would they cover it up, Jonathan? Surely that would be of great interest to everybody if these individuals had superior knowledge to ours and could help us with technology in some way. Why, why would they want to cover it up? I, I don't know. I, I Maybe I don't understand why they would want to cover it up. Or would we be scared of that? 
Well, I, I think my opinion why, why they want to cover it up is because they, they, they want to control us. You know, the government wants to control us and keep us paying taxes so that, you know, that they stay in power and, you know, they have all the money. And I think when we make contact with extraterrestrials and we, can't, and we, become, and we have these enlightenment experiences through contact with extraterrestrials and come to see that we are creators of our own reality and that we are more can never be harmed mm -hmm. you know that they, they can really no longer control us when when they when we see that you know we are infinite consciousness and we we are immortal beings i'm looking at some of the questions coming in here by text can aliens travel through time that comes in from dave uh, can they travel through time i mean have they discovered time travel because it, it, does, it does i don't believe although i'm a big fan of time travel i don't believe that we as human beings will ever um, be able to develop time travel because if we did, I think we would know about it by now because somebody would have come back and told us. Yeah, that's an interesting theory. Um, the, the ETs can definitely do time travel because the way their their ships move is that they actually uh, teleport. The, the way they, they tr move through dimensions and through time space is they actually sit in their craft and they're like telepathically linked to their craft and they which is actually a part of their higher self and they they all they do is they visualize where they want to go to and their craft like um disappears and reappears in a, in another place another reality or another time so because we're all one being one consciousness and we all exist here and now as the one infinite creator when we understand this more and more and particularly how they understand it they understand that there is no time because everything exists here and now as us and there really is no space because everything exists here and now as us. So they are able to instantaneously, instantaneously teleport to any time or any location in reality merely by thinking about where they wish to go. Jeepers, that'll be handy. I know where I'd go, like to go right now if, that, if we could do that. Have, and they haven't shared that technology with us. Have they, not, have, they, have they not helped us in some way and kind of felt a little bit sorry for us because according to what you're telling us, we're quite primitive to that, uh, you know, comparison to them. Well, I think some of the, the gray, the, Z, the Zeta Grays, as they are known, have shared some technology with the government in exchange for the government sort of letting them do the abductions without interfering. Because, but the more sort of positive and enlightened um, extraterrestrials, they, they, they respect our free will. It, it's kind of like don't mess with the natives. They, they understand that we're beings on a spiritual journey and we have to evolve at our own rate so we can learn the lessons we know, learn, need to learn. And they also understand that they were, that because this technology that uses teleportation, it can also be used for negative purposes as well. You know, it's the same sort of, you know, it could be used for, I, I guess, sort of making weapons. So mm -hmm. basically they, they don't want to interfere with our evolution and they, and they don't trust us with this technology. Uh, also, somebody else said the question says, do, have, or did they build the pyramids? Do you believe they, okay, well, maybe not so much the pyramids, but maybe you do believe they built the pyramids. Do you believe they left any signs? Have they left any markings on the earth that we could establish that, they're, that are not ours? Yeah, I, I, think, I think they've left a lot of signs. And I think the pyramids is one for, you know, still today, we don't know how the pyramids were built and we couldn't replicate the Well, we do have a fair idea, themselves. don't we? Well, I mean, we, we know how they moved large boulders using, you know, round bits of timber and they basically move them along. It would have been quite difficult but, I mean, they were quite ingenuity. I mean, they had a lot of ingenuity in those days. You know, they had to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, when you, when you look into this, it's actually, um, a, lot, a lot of people who have researched this believe that it's absolutely impossible to have, to have done it with the logs and the rollers. And, and there's, there's, there's other civilizations all around the world, like in Aztec and places like Puma Punku. There's a, there's a lot of ancient creations. Um, in these places like Egypt that we, we couldn't recreate today, even even like small bowls that um, carved out of solid rock that we couldn't reproduce well, today. Well, we so, couldn't reproduce them in a reasonable amount of time because most of these things were done by hand and took, you know, hundreds of years to develop and build, where we don't have that kind of time nowadays. So I suppose that's probably the reason why we say it probably wouldn't be worth doing or it wouldn't be practical to do. But g getting back to the aliens, so when was the last time you communicated with them, Jonathan? Is it, um, is it constant? Yeah, I, 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 still, I still do the channeling occasionally. I, I've had a bit of a break after the contact experience last September. I, I've taken a bit of a break from it. But um, yeah, I, I can connect in with their consciousness at really any time I want. And 
Gosh, I mean, if you could do it any time you want, surely you would be of use to a government or you would be of use to uh, organisations or technology organisations. Surely you would be of great use if you could contact aliens at will. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, I, I don't really trust the government and the, and the government know I don't trust them because I'm quite spoken about this because I, I believe the government have a negative agenda to cover this up. So, so I wouldn't work for the government. But but they, I do believe the government have their own people who, who do do this work in the background for them. And in relation to your mediumship as well, are you still doing that as well for people contacting the dead? Because, you know, a lot of mediums over the years have been found out, you know, to be just people using the Barnum method and, you know, not really people who are talking to the dead. Because, you know, it seems bizarre that dead people would, you know, give letters and clues as to who they are rather than just saying straight out who they are. Yeah, I, I've never really had any interest in speaking to dead people. Um, I've connected with a few friends and relatives, like just after they've passed over, when they've had a, a short message for me to share with someone. But I'm, I'm not really interested. But you, you, don't, know. you don't do it for other people. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't really see the point in talking to humans, you know, when I could be talking to like super advanced extraterrestrials, you know, it seems a bit mundane talking to like a mm. dumb human, no, no offence. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> well yeah, we, we are like headless chickens by times. But Jonathan, what, what sort of reaction do you get when you do any public speaking or you do radio interviews or you put, I know you put videos up on YouTube, which are seem to be quite popular. What sort of reaction do you get from people? It's getting a lot more positive and a lot more open over time. When, when I first got into this 10 years ago, I was basically just ridiculed and people thought I was crazy. And but it seems more and more we seem to have gone through a huge transformation over the last 10 years. And just recently, over the last two or three years, it seems everyone seems much more open to this recently. So you think people believe everything that you're saying or, or they, they believe that it's real? Because I'm looking at some of the texts, and I'm not going to read them out to you, but you can only imagine what some of the texts are probably yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're used to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at some of their texts. Somebody else wants to know, uh, have they, are they planning to visit and make themselves known anytime soon? They, they are doing this individually, like the way I had individual contact. So, so if you're willing, if you're listening to this, and you want to make contact with extraterrestrials, Really, it's a case of just meditating and kind of putting the energy out there, holding it in your heart and your consciousness that you want to make contact. And if you take yourself out to a remote place in, in nature, you know, well, well away from civilization, and like meditate and put it out consistently to your, like, your higher self or your spirit or God and say, I want to make contact with extraterrestrials. They, they will. It probably won't happen straight away. But if you continuously do this and you do this for the right reason, for like you know, mm -hmm. out of love and what, what, and out of you know, not out of selfish means, it is very likely you will have your own contact experience. Well, look, it's been interesting. That's all I'd say, and I let people make up their own minds of what they think of your experiences, uh, Jonathan. Um, keep up the good work, and thank you very much for coming on the show, and I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. And and by the way, just quickly, uh, around by around twenty thirty six, I I believe we will have made open contact as a glo as a global civilization, and it will be known, and they will be openly contacting us. And by twenty thirty six, where, where, yeah, where, that, where did you where did you get that that kind of year date from? They told you. Well, it, the, the it, it, um I've heard a few other channels and an extraterrestrial contact talk around this area from around twenty twenty five to twenty thirty three, and. Basically, I, I've seen how life moves in cycles. Like I had my first contact experience in 2009, and then I had this second one in 2018. And it sort of ties into these cycles of um, spiritual awakening. Like everyone said, 2000 was a significant point spiritually. And I, I believe we're moving in kind of nine-year cycles. And so I believe 2020. Seven, yeah, 2027 will be another sort of point where we will have more contact. And then, but I think it might still be a bit early. I don't think most people are ready for the sort of multidimensional out of body enlightenment experience yet. But I believe by 2036, then most people will have come to a place where they're ready to embrace their multidimensional spiritual nature. And this is really what the ETs are waiting for. They're waiting for us to become more enlightened, more compassionate, more loving, more... Well, look, more judging by what I've been reading in the news on a regular basis, I don't believe we're going to become more enlightened. <laughs> so, we'll wait We'll wait and see what happens in three weeks in Britain with the Brexit. Then we'll see how much enlightenment we have. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, listen, thank you very much, Neve, for coming on the air. Appreciate it, all right? 
Uh, there you go. Jonathan Martin, who is a channeler for extraterrestrials, according to himself. Real people. Real opinions. Real talk radio. The multi-award-winning Niall Boylan Show. Classic hits.